What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I color grade my videos to go from this to this. The first thing that I do when I start to color grade is to add some serial nodes. You can do this by either right clicking the first node and clicking add node, add serial, or a faster way is using the keyboard shortcut Alt or Option plus S for serial. Serial nodes operate in the same way that layers operate if you're coming from Premiere, except that nodes flow from left to right, which you can follow from the starting clip all the way to the output in a flowchart like manner, instead of being stacked on top of each other like layers are. There are other types of nodes you can use in Resolve, but serial nodes are the most common and the only ones that I'm currently using in my workflow. I'm going to add six nodes so that there are seven in total, and I'm going to rearrange them like so to keep them organized. The top four nodes are what you would call color correction nodes, and the bottom two will be color grading nodes. The difference between the two is that color correction is normalizing your clips by fixing things like exposure and neutralizing any color cast you may have, while color grading is taking your corrected image and adding a style or a look to it. The last node will be my color space transform, and that is the conversion from S-Log3 to Rec709. If you're not shooting in log, you can skip this node entirely. I'm going to label all of the nodes now so I know what each of them are doing. You can do this by either right-clicking a node and clicking Add Label, or you can map a keyboard shortcut to do this. I've mapped mine to Q. So as I noted, the last node is the color space transform. So I'll label it CST and I'll go through now and label the rest of the nodes. The first node I'll complete is actually the last node and that is my conversion node. The reason why it is at the end of the node flow and not the beginning is because of how gammas and color spaces work. Without going into too much detail, you get more colors to work with in the correction and grading process if you put the conversion at the end and not at the beginning. So to set this conversion, I'll open up effects and search for color space transform. Once I find it, I'll drag that onto my node. For the inputs, I'll set up what I shot in, which is sgamut3.cine and Sony S-Log3. For the outputs, if you're grading this project for YouTube or web, then you're gonna to wanna to select Rec 709 and Gamma 2.2. Your inputs will change depending on what you shot your footage in, but your output will always be Rec 709 and Gamma 2.2 for web and for YouTube. All right, going back to the beginning of the node graph, the first node in the correction process is for contrast and general exposure of the image. The easiest way to get this right is using the waveform graph. And you can get to this by clicking this little icon here to expose what are referred to as the scopes and selecting waveform. From here, I like to go into the settings and turn off colorize so I can just see the brightness levels on the waveform graph. What this graph represents is the brightness of each pixel on the image, where zero at the bottom is pure black and 1023 at the top is pure white. So this area here with really bright values is this orange light and the same over here on the left with the blue light. The thing we want to avoid is areas where the values go below zero, which is where the blacks get crushed like this or too high where your highlights start to clip like this. I like to do this correction using the primary wheels. You can also use curves to make this type of correction, but I prefer to use the wheels. Some people get confused what the difference is between the primary wheels and the log wheels, and Donna did a really good job in his video explaining the difference. But to summarize quickly, the lift, gamma, and gain wheels affect the image more globally and have a smoother effect on the image. The log wheels, on the other hand, are more targeted to specific luminance values of your image. This can be helpful in some scenarios, but the log wheels can also introduce artifacts and harsh transition in your image if you're not careful. For these primary corrections, I use only the primary wheels. With that out of the way, I'll raise the lift first, which controls the shadows so that the graph is just above touching the bottom. Once that's done, I'll set the highlights by raising the gain a bit like so. Now, I'll use the gamma, which is the mid-tone portion of the image, and adjust it until the image looks good. And that looks pretty good to me. Next up is saturation. At this point, you're probably wondering why I couldn't just do this in the first node. 
Well, you can, but the way that I like to grade is to use one node for one function. Some people combine all of their corrections into one node and all of their grades into another node. I don't like this because for one, it's harder to see at a glance what each node is doing without diving into the node and looking specifically at all of the settings. Secondly, it's a lot easier to see the difference one of these changes makes by turning the node on and off. You can do this, by the way, by clicking a node's number. You see, when I do this, it goes off, and when I click it again, it goes back on. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control plus D to toggle nodes on and off. You can select multiple nodes and hit Command D and toggle them all on and off. You can't really do this if all of your corrections are in a single node. You can see in this video the saturation is way too saturated, and that's because I accidentally had my camera in the wrong picture profile setting when shooting. So we're gonna have to fix that now. I'm gonna drop the saturation like so, and I think that's okay. The white balance is still off, but we're gonna fix that now. There are two main ways that I like to set my white balance. The first is manually adjusting this slider until it looks right. The other is to use this eyedropper to select something white or neutral in the image. Resolve will then set the white balance for you. If you have a gray card like this, it makes setting your white balance super easy. You can pick one up for $10 on Amazon and I'll link one in the description below. I actually used a gray card in this video and I'll show you how you would use it. This is my shot with the gray card, but you can see that I don't have any of the nodes on the clip that we've done so far. The easiest way by far to copy the grade to this clip is to click the scroll wheel on the clip that you wanna copy from. So in this case, I'll hover over our clip that we've been working on and I'll click the scroll wheel and it'll copy all of the nodes over. I'm going to undo this because I wanna show you another way to do this in case for whatever reason you aren't using a mouse. Go back into the clip that we were working on and right click anywhere on the image and click grab still. Now, open up the gallery here and you'll see the still that we just took. This is really cool because you can export this 4K still and get a pretty high quality photo but this still also contains the entire node graph as well, which you can see by right clicking and selecting display node graph. And we can see all of the nodes that we created here. So what we can do now with this still is by selecting the clip that we want to apply it to, right click our still and select apply grade. Again, you can also just click the scroll wheel on this still and it'll copy all of your nodes over to your clip as well. Okay, so making sure that I'm in the correct node, I'll set the white balance using the eyedropper. And now since this video was one continuous shot where the lighting or camera settings didn't change, I can copy this grade back over to my other clip. This wouldn't work if you had multiple scenes shot with different cameras and different lighting conditions. You would need to use a gray card for each one of those shots. It's easy enough to set the white balance manually and I thought about leaving this section out of the video entirely, but I thought it was a good thing for you guys to know and it's also a good way to show you how you can copy grades from one clip over to another. The last note in the color correction phase is the skin tones. For this correction, instead of looking at the waveform graph, I'm gonna open up the vector scope graph. This graph shows us the distribution of all of the pixels in our image on the color wheel. So you can see in our image, we have a lot of cyan and orange due to the background lights. The farther away a value is from the center of the circle, the more saturated it is. This graph is really useful for the skin tones because years ago, this skin tone line was created, which is essentially the optimal hue or color for skin tones. If you don't see this line, open up the settings and check off the box next to show skin tone indicator. What I like to do now is using the pen tool in the power windows, highlight a section of the skin. Now hit shift and H to show only your selection. Because this line is so small, I'm gonna open up the settings again and check the show 2x zoom to see it a little better. It looks like the skin tones are actually okay in this shot, but let's say for example, the skin tones were too far to the left, meaning they were too green. You could fix this by going to the tint and adding a little bit of magenta to balance the green. If the skin tones were a little bit too far to the right, meaning they were too magenta, you would do the opposite, you would add some green. Now I'll hit Shift and H again to see the whole image and I'll turn off the mask by clicking the pen tool again. 
You could just stop right here. The video looks pretty good. And to be honest, I don't do a ton of tweaking after this point. I mostly rely on my lighting to get the image that I want, but I will make a few small finishing touches. One little thing you guys can do is to hit the like button if you're getting value out of this video. All right, so I have a lot of teal and orange going on in this video because of the lights, but I don't like how warm the blacks are here in my hoodie. So I'm gonna pump a little bit of teal into the shadows to fix this. This is where I will use the log wheels because like I mentioned before, it's more targeted and I only want to add color to the shadows. You can see that if I try to add the color to the lift instead, Color gets added to the midtones as well, and I don't want this. So I'm gonna add a little bit of teal, but I'm not gonna overdo it. Less is more when it comes to color grading in most cases. Next up, I'm gonna add a vignette to draw more attention to me in the center. I'll do this by opening up the effects again and searching for vignette. I'll change this from basic to advanced. I'll increase the size up to one, softness up to one, and adjust the transparency until I like the look like so and that's it we've taken this and turned it into this all right guys that's it for this video i hope that you found it helpful if you did and you want to keep seeing content like this then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my next videos and i will see you in the next video <clears throat> i love cereal